friends, welcome back into the Golden Tea Lounge. It's been a little while. It is time to take a look. We're going to do a cycle of the 2021 courses and uh, get you guys a little bit more excited as things get close to launch Monday, our ship day. It's a massive ship day, regardless of what's going on in the world. It's a very exciting time to be a player of Golden Tea. If you have not found out if your location is going to be getting the update next week when it comes out. Make sure to reach out to your operator. Uh, you know, reach out to the locations management, whoever you can. Make sure they're going to get that update when it comes out on Monday. So, if this is your first time being around for a Golden T twenty twenty one or the update cycle, thousands and thousands of updates going to ship out next Monday from our warehouse in Vernon Hills, Illinois, outside of Chicago. Starting Tuesday morning, operators across the U.S. that have purchased the update will start receiving those update sticks. Now, it's not a guarantee that your operator will necessarily get or pay for the one-day shipping option. Uh, it really just depends on the location, you know, the size of the operator, the number of locations number of players, etc. You know, we don't have control over that. They have plenty of options. But if you've got an operator that uh, is excited for Golden Tee 2021 as we are, as you guys are, uh, a lot of them will purchase those day or those one day shipping so they can start installing updates Tuesday morning. So as of Tuesday morning, you should start seeing more locations pop up on the Find a Game website as well as the places area of the GT Caddy app. GT Caddy will also get an upgrade next week for 2021, so you'll start seeing those courses, the course logos, uh, the option for invites, and everything will p come up as the game is launched next week. Just like I planned it, a little kiss off of the dirt. Uh, Rooster Hunter, do you are you a commercial operator or are you a home edition owner? Uh, home edition owners can go to home.goldt.com and actually pre-order their update. The home edition updates will come out at the end of October that last week. Uh, if you're a commercial operator who has yet to order uh, the update, go to uh, amusements.itsgames.com or goldt.com. Reach out with the contact us feature. You can give us a call. Um, I don't have the number. I actually give you the number off the top of my head, 847-870-7027. Get to customer service or sales. They will get the update uh, order in for you. And uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple after that. I know our sales team, uh, as well as you know Adam, Travis, myself, in marketing, doing uh, what we can to help get the word out there to operators, players. Uh, you know, it's a tough year. It's, uh, it's a tough and interesting year with everything going around COVID. Uh, a lot of locations are still shut down and we're, uh, you know, very well understanding of that fact. So, uh, you know, talk to our sales team. But the other thing too is if you're in a state where you can safely get out there and play Golden Tee, you know, make sure you're out there playing Golden Tee now. And when these courses come out in the next week, you know, starting next Tuesday, if for some reason you don't have a lot of locations near you getting the update, you know, get a hold of that operator, like I said, and, you know, make sure they are aware that you're still there, you're out hanging at your local bar, playing Golden Tee, and that you want to get a part of those new courses. Oh, look, Brian B., I was wondering when you are going to pop up. Uh, Baja, Philip Kelly on Facebook, Baja, uh, you know, it's definitely, it's one of the easier ones, but those last couple of holes can really, uh, can really be tough. 16, the par 5, 17, the par 3, and then hole 18. It really just depends on the setup and where those, uh, those dynamic tees get set. Could use a couple of hole outs. It's been a little bit of a while. Um. Eric, uh, YouTube, good to hear that Minnesota's pretty set up. Um, you know, I'll tell you what, I, without talking about exact numbers and everything like that, the, uh, we have, the updates are coming in, the, rec 
requests and the orders uh, is very, very, uh, how do I put this? It's looking very good compared to what, you know, we would have thought four, five, six months ago in the middle of this pandemic. And, uh, you know, outside of myself, Adam Kramer, uh, and our QA team, pretty much everybody else is, uh, is working remotely. So I know that there's been a handful of bugs and everything that have come up in the pre-release. And, uh, you know, there's actually going to be a new, the update stick that operators will get next Tuesday will have version 16.4.1 on it. And then uh, we'll have our day one patch that'll probably come out, uh, that'll come out next Tuesday as well. So a lot of the stuff that you guys have helped us find um, that our programmers and artists have dove into over the last couple of weeks to really uh, hammer out some of these very odd and sometimes very concerning bugs that have popped up. Uh, you know, we have a real strong feeling after, you know, the countless hours of testing over the last couple of weeks that the, uh, the version you guys will get on Tuesday between the 16.4.1 update sticks and that patch that will come out um, on Tuesday for our, you know, our typical day one patch, those will really make a difference in terms of the game, you know, the, uh, the slowdowns, the weird out of bounds bug that we've seen on Forest Null that is tied to some memory leaks, uh, you know, even going back to the Mayfield 16 days a few years ago. Um, we are pretty confident that uh, the stuff that we fig you know, that we have fixed and figured out will actually take care of all that stuff. The T resets, all that. Obviously, this is the, the world of game development, so it's not a guarantee. Just now realizing I forgot my water. That's dis disappointing. But um, again, not a guarantee that stuff is not going to come up. But uh, you know, we're fairly, fairly confident that we will be light years ahead of where we were at the beginning of the last couple of uh, update cycles. How's this going to go in? Oh, air camera, appreciate it. Uh, you know, it's been a tough year for us, uh, but literally like the, you know, from the summer on, it is, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're light years ahead of where we are in terms of development, you know, next year's game. Actually, Todd R. just asked, you know, uh, are you guys just starting on 2022? And, and it's, it's funny because actually work for uh, 2022 started at towards like, I would say spring of this year, like early, like late winter, early spring. If that, uh, Jim Zielinski knows by the time the force update comes out where he wants to go. Uh, it's actually funny that Adam and I were talking about that the other day. He was sharing me, uh, sharing with me some of Jim's ideas and locations and everything. Um, you know, it, it these year, this year's courses are, are very different than what we've ever done with Monte Zabios and the elevation changes and Hidden Temple and that kind of stuff. And I think Jim Z is just going to take what he started this year and just keep uh, growing and growing the, uh, I don't want to say craziness, but the, the unique locations, the unique, uh, the whole designs, all that. I feel like he's had um, some rejuvena rejuvenation and, you know, feels much more confident in changing the way he's done things over the years. Speaking of which, uh, Desert Oasis, our design a whole winner, a uh, very unique part three that uh, hopefully you don't hit those trees because that's, that's going to cause some problems for you. Uh, I would not say that we're going to the moon in 2022. Um, but I'll say, you know, I don't know if anybody really expects what's coming for uh, for Golden Seed 2022. So it uh, it is also weird to say 2022 because, damn it, I was doing so well and I hit a bad shot. Um, you know, because it's 2020. We're working on 2021 and releasing 2021, and then we're also going to be already working on 2022. Damn, I thought I actually had a chance uh, – I had a thought I had a chance to make that shift. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to clarify, so I'm also playing in production, which is why you're seeing all these locations popped up. Because um, I also want to see what scores uh, the other players are hitting too. So I'm actually in production right now playing with all those beta lake uh, or pre-release locations that are out there. Um, and like I said, there's been a lot of good changes that have happened since we released that uh, 
pre-release a few weeks ago. And, you know, shout out to the operators that were part of that program this year. Oh, please go in. Oh, damn it. Uh, you know, we definitely expanded our reach in terms of where we go, how many pre-release machines we have out there. Um, you know, I would say we probably more than tripled that this year with everything going on, and it's been very well received across the board. So I appreciate all of our operators out there that have helped, you know, push this game along in uh, while also trying to rebuild, you know, a lot of, not rebuild, but um, I guess re maybe rebuild is the, the right word. Uh, you know, rebuild their businesses in the time of COVID and, uh, you know, with tighter restrictions and, you know, uh, sanitary concerns and all that. So kudos to them as well. Um, Jay, you know, it's a good question. You know, could you rank how much you, I enjoy the courses, uh, but not necessarily just by difficulty? I got to be honest, selfishly, I really, really love Montes at Bios because um, I don't want to say like I'm a power hitter, like I'm nowhere near the, the level of like a mouth or somebody like that. Um, but I love to test and see how just how far I can hit the damn ball. And the elevation changes on Monte Zabios combined with Jim Z's dynamic tees or like version two of those dynamic tees. And you guys have seen it in some of the preview videos. There's just so many opportunities to potentially ace a par four or a par five that you never thought would be there. Um, just like we actually showed off a bunch of the new tees from hole 17 the other day. I have not seen this tee yet, which is ironic. Um, this is a hole where, and of course I'm in production so I don't have my fancy tools, but all these different patches of grass um, is put, and more are potentially uh, tee box spots that you're going to get. So I don't have to necessarily worry about the rock wall that is kind of on the, the right hand side where I'm here, um, but I do have to worry about, speaking of Monte Zavios and elevation changes, um, I would say it, it goes Monte and then Hidden Temple. And then the other three, you know, they're kind of even for me. They all have, uh, you know, they're, they're really fun holes. They all have some, God, I was concerned about that. They, they all have some tough holes. So I would say Monte is undeniably my favorite. And then, uh, you know, Hidden Temple is right under there at number two. All right, hole 18. This one is... Uh, not as bad as uh, Anse Coco's 18, but as we saw in some of my preview videos, it, it can be pretty tough. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just move this back here. Oh, by the way, the sun reflecting behind me off these cacti, beautiful. Shout out to artists. I'm gonna just tee to the right. I'm gonna use an eight wood and I'm just going to crush this. Um, by the way, a lot of people have talked about the changes to the eight wood, nine wood. We will go a little bit in more depth with those next week, especially as you guys start to play more. I'm told the nine wood, um, the loft, is a little bit shorter, but it also goes a lot farther. Um, I have not played enough, like with my eight wood, to see the difference. Um, but but we'll get to that. Also, I know that was like a safe shot, but I really thought I was going to be much more closer. Uh, I thought I was going to be on the green, but a birdie here is not necessarily bad. Although it's bad for my score because I'm barely staying in the top 10. But, uh, oh well. But yes, we're going to play cycle for these uh, five brand new courses. And uh, it's also been so long since we have done or, you know, a live stream um, during the day. You know, normally it's, it's later towards the evening. So I wanted to, uh, to also just you know, get something out there at lunchtime. People can sit down and relax. I know I, when I actually take some time and uh, and hang out during lunch, I, I do like to watch some live streams of just golden tea, you know, news, all kinds of stuff. So, you know, it is, what, 12 o'clock now? And let's be honest, uh, it's Thursday, and I just really didn't want to sit at my desk and do work. So I thought, why not have the excuse of doing work while playing golden tea and talking to all of you? So I am going to... Uh, cheapishly play a quick little video for the pro shop while I go run and grab my water but also you guys should get out there and get some more Golden Z gear for now that we are done with like the 2021 development stuff there's a lot of other things we can't talk about that we'll be working on but um, we are working on some 
new t-shirt designs and ideas. And, and as always, feel free if you guys have any kinds of ideas, whether it's you know generic golf type of shirts or you know designs, golden tea style stuff. You know, feel free to shoot us a, a DM on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, all, a lot of you here, for better or for worse, uh, already message me at all hours of the night or text or call. So, you know, just feel free to continue to do that. And, uh, you know, we'll see what cool stuff we can come up with together after I ace this. Oh, you bastard. Damn it. All right. Quick break, and we'll be right back. that worked. I've been messing around with my controls um, and probably just didn't test them as well enough, but that's all right. <coughs> uh, Rooster Hunter asks, what is my opinion of the Golden Tea at Walmart? Well, I will, I will, I will start off with this. I have been playing Golden Tea for far longer than I should ever admit, but I don't know, what is it, 2020? I gotta be honest, it's probably close to 25 years now at this point, which sounds so ridiculous, uh, and it is. So is this hole out. Yeah! Actually called it. Um, uh, Richard, the only thing is, I don't know if I can technically use Peter Jacobson's signature. I did it because it was a one-off print. I don't know. I have to check. I mean, he's still, he's still our guy, so I'm sure I could. I'm gonna just focus on this stupid little double eagle though. Uh, much, much easier than trying to go to the right hand side. <coughs> uh, but anyways, the other thing was, oh, uh, I've been playing this gold, you know, I've been playing golden tea forever. Let's just call it that. And so when the opportunity came up to work back to back, oh, come on, how did that not, ah, damn it, that would've been beautiful. But. Uh, when the opportunity came up to work with Arcade 1UP, it's kind of along the same times where I literally had gone through so many closets and cabinets and drawers that I probably shouldn't have of, you know, things, but I had gone through a lot of the old archive discs that nobody had touched in 10, 15 years. And so, you know, we were able to... Um, you know, we were able to do some really cool stuff with the arcade one-up game um, because of what we found on those discs in terms of like art, in terms of nasty shots like that. I have no idea how that worked. Just wish I didn't lose my spin. Um, but in terms of like, you know, the artwork for the games, the codes for those games, really glad that putt grabbed in. Um, so I have a sweet spot for the arcade one-up game because I, you know, helped make that, you know, the look and feel the way it is along with Adam Josh and like our, and our partners at Arcade 1UP. So, um, I don't know if I can give you an honest opinion of it because I worked, you know, alongside it for a while, but it is what it is. It's a, it's a opportunity to play the original Golden Tee or as I like to call the original Golden Tee because not a lot of people uh, remember the 89 version um uh, you know, just because it was so long ago. So it's an opportunity to throw back to the late 90s, Peter Jacobson's Golden Tee Golf, um, games and courses that I grew up on and I love. But also, um, it's much, much different. It is not, uh, what drives me up a wall the most, speaking honestly here with you guys, is when people comment on our, our ads or posts for Golden Tee Go or for the Home Edition, and they're like, I could just go get an arcade one-up game. Okay, great. You're talking about two different things. You're talking about 12 courses um, at the time, what were exciting features, but now in the world of Golden Tee are just very minimal features of like 12 courses, you know, four golfers, skins or stroke play. Like, you know, uh, that's what we had, you know, that's what the technical limitations were back then. But to compare a $400 product to the Ah, damn it! To the uh, to the home edition or even Go that runs on you know like new technologies and has 90 courses at this point or, or almost uh, close to 90 courses for the home edition. It's kind of it's just silly. 
Like, I get it. Not everybody can afford it. And I sure as, you know, hell have been there before because I bought a home edition before I started at IT. Um, and Josh Pick never gave me a refund. So I'll have to, you know, yell at him for that later. But in all seriousness, uh, you know, it's not uh, – <coughs> It's not a cheap little piece that you can just go pick up anywhere. It's for the people that love golden tea. And I can think of, you know, a couple dozen people off the top of my head that, uh, you know, at first thought it was an expensive purchase, but then bought it. And, you know, you think about the money you save. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, now I got a chip. Uh, you know, you just really have to think about it the way, you know, you save money from not going out to the bar as much or not drinking as much, not going out and spending money on food or some people practice on their home edition, play well on their home edition, and then they go out to the bar and try to make money. It's, um, I love the arcade one-up game because uh, those were the games I grew up on. Um, but the smart thing that, that Don and you know Scott and, and now Adam and Josh are continuing that, uh, continuing what those guys built over the last 10, 15 years, is that you know there's a little bit of golden tea for everybody. We got a mobile game. Really hoping that would go out. You know, we've got Golden Tea Mobile, we've got Golden Tea Go, we got the Home Edition, we've got the Arcade One Up game. Um, it's uh, there's just a lot of options, but for good reason because we're expanding the reach of the brand, and you know, the uh, the people that are out there buying the Arcade One Up game. You know, they might have played it in the 90s in the arcade or, you know, with their family and friends when they were in college and just kind of forgot about it. And it helps bring those people back into the world of Golden Tea. They find Golden Tea fan, they find our social media, they find these streams, and now they're hooked back on to, to Golden Tea as, as we know it these days. So uh, that was a super long rambling speech, but I definitely needed to get it off my chest just because... I get it. Like, not everybody has the money to go buy a Go or a Home Edition. Or people, um, you know, I saw as I was going through my little spiel, people were talking about, you know, how come the Go isn't online and, and that kind of stuff. Like, I think uh, somebody posted on here and said, you know, why would anybody buy a Home Edition if the Go had the same exact features? And it's like, that's a pretty easy answer. You know, the, uh, the Go and the Home Edition are priced, um, you know, where we feel they comfortably should be for the stuff that goes into it. Come on, damn it. Uh, for, you know, the hardware that's in it, uh, you know, for anybody on the fence about Go, Golden Tee Go literally is running the same hardware that we are playing Golden Tee 2021 on here today. Like, the same Nighthawk system and all of that. So, you're not getting, um, you know, it's not like you're getting a cheap, watered-down version of uh, the Nighthawk system, so to speak, you're just not getting all the features that are part of the home edition. Woo, I did not feel good about that. But, um, so, like, you know, we're always talking about plans for Go, and, and we're, wheels are in motion on uh, plan, you know, the next set of plans for Go after the launch of this. And, and like I said, there's some, you know, real exciting stuff that we're working on, uh, regardless of mobile and 21 and Go that, you know, we can't talk about yet, but will be soon. And, you know, we have exciting plans for Go, you know. And I'm not saying that the Go is not going to go online, but the Go, damn it. Um, if the Go was to ever go online, you're most likely not going to see full-fledged features uh, like you do in the Home Edition. They're just two different. The Go is for the more casual diehard Golden Tee player, it's something that plays out there a month or has a trailer or, you know, goes camping or has a boat or whatever the case may be, and they just want uh, the chance to play casual Golden Tee, you know, and I think, uh, you know, I think there's an opportunity for us to take the Go platform online, and but there's ways to do it where we protect the home edition. Oh, come on, do it. Come on. This should be like a five better, damn it. And honestly... Um, because there's been so many irons in the fire, I really have not had a lot of time. Like, this is probably the only the second cycle, actually, if not the first, that I played on the courses in their, you know, current final state, so to speak. Ah. Uh, okay, I felt real bad when I first...
first hit that shot because I thought it was going to be too soft, but uh, let's see. Uh, Jay, you know, oh, I didn't realize I had a 20, that I was in first. Yes, I just want to take the fact that I don't play a lot of golden tea out there in the wild anymore. Um, so the fact that I actually am first place in a contest is like near and dear to my heart. Even though, uh, I don't know if that 29 will stick. There's plenty of opportunities to hole out there. So, um, Jay, that's an interesting point. Uh, if you're a homeowner and you buy a go, can you share the subscription? Um, I can't speak to that, you know, because that's an Adam and Josh decision, but it's actually a really good idea. I, uh, you know, the Go software is not made, uh, you know, the, the Go software as it stands is not set up to go online, but it doesn't mean that it can't be in the future. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, we put a USB port and Ethernet port on the game for a reason uh, with having potential intentions down the line of bringing that online. So sharing a subscription between Go and the Home Edition uh, is very interesting. It's I definitely will talk to Adam and Josh about that because I, I do like the idea there. Now, Forrest Knoll is, uh, I would say this is probably right underneath um, Monte and Hidden Temple because this is such a, it feels and looks like such a casual, straightforward course. Uh, but Jim and the, Jim Z and the design team really did a good job to make this different than any other kind of, uh, you know, grassy tree course that we've done in the past. Like the elevation changes, you can see this a little bit, not as crazy as, <coughs> not as crazy as uh, Monte by any means, but, you know, from compared to like your shady acres of the past or the Mayfields uh, or some of the other courses we've done recently, <clears throat> it really has its own kind of feel. <coughs> yeah, 17 is an interesting, Brian, uh, interesting one, Brian, just because it's, it's three tiers and it's such a tiny, tiny green. <coughs> so I don't know I don't really think there's too many opportunities that if you end up <coughs> hitting one of those tiers down I mean the likelihood of you staying on the green is probably going to be pretty low I actually really like that shot come on do it what the? Ah! I hate this game. I really do. Man, that is tough. Oh, wait. And I didn't get shot points. I uh, just got double robbed. The one thing I will say about a lot of these par four, uh, excuse me, par threes that I really like is that they're, they're so short. You know, it, it really, oh, is this going to go in at least? Oh, no. Um. There's just something about this course <coughs> that I love that these par threes are short and you got to make sure that you kind of build your bag as such uh, to protect yourself. <coughs> Let's see. I'm kind of feeling release here. Let's see. The game feel it? Eh, almost. <clears throat> As I like to say, uh, definitely close enough. All right, so I need some shotties, that's for sure. I don't care. Now that Brian's here watching, I don't care what I do as long as I can beat Brian because it very rarely happens. Oh, and actually, since we're all here, oh, that was, I, I literally opened my fat mouth and then hit a terrible shot. Which is a perfect opportunity to break out the five hybrid. Oh, you son of a bitch. Um, damn it. Uh, I got some really fun plans for next week uh, during release week. 
Uh, we're probably going to get a video call together with Jim Zelinsky, Adam Kramer, myself while we're playing through the courses. Um, I can't believe I just parred a friggin' easy par four. Uh, that's, uh, that's a heartbreaker. Almost as heartbreaking as the fact that that golf ball didn't bounce off of the, uh, the wall. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. <coughs> but as we get uh, more of those plans fleshed out with Jim Z for next week, we'll let you know. Uh, still a better chipper than you, Brad Stewart. Uh, just want to clarify. Now this is a, a tough par five, just because it's a, you know because well as you can see it's very easy to get off center um, on this. Hey, look, another opportunity for me to miss an easy chip. Oh, look at that eagle chip. <coughs> This is a fun hole because even though it's not drivable right now, I've got a strong feeling that at some point in the future, this hole is going to be, I mean, look at all that green. There's definitely going to be tee boxes that are going to tease you and try to get you to go through there. Um, I have not seen the new tees uh, yet just because it's going to be a long time uh, a long time coming. That's a good point, Brad. You're very true. Very, very true. Good at chipping because you never hit the green. That's I got. Yeah, I give you the win for you. That's I gotta give you credit there. Uh, Andrew, I don't. I'm not sure why my mic would be quiet. Nobody else has said anything. Our sounds haven't changed. Oh, you know why? I, this might be part of it. I was using it for something else, and it was pointed the other way. Now, of course, that stupid eagle that I turned into a nice par um, is the difference between Brian B. In, in first place and me. Uh, B. Man, if you have another YouTube account you want to switch to, you basically have to go into the uh, caddy slash live wire, disconnect the old YouTube and then relink your new YouTube account. Yeah, that was my bad. Uh, been doing a lot of work in the lounge here as we're uh, just some, you know, fun new things with vMix and, and video calls and that kind of stuff. So, totally my fault. Twenty after fourteen on this course, uh, you know, really isn't that bad. But what I'm going to do here, even though I shouldn't, is I'm going to go for it. Oh, come on! Damn it! Uh, this is a really fun hole, just because. Yes. Yes, Brad Stewart. Yes. Uh, because this is a hole that you're, you know, in a position like me where I'm down two strokes. Like, all right, do I try to go for the green here? Because it's it's pretty tough. This is going to be one of those swing holes where, especially in match play against somebody else, where you're going to be like, okay, do I go for this? I'm down a couple strokes. I need to get that eagle. But is it worth the risk? Uh, also, this hole, I really haven't played much outside of the painful task of recording real-time rival shots. So, let's see how this goes. Ultra shot? I'd be in for that. Sorry, Brad Stewart. I, uh, I'm not a fan of the stouts. Don't, you know, don't really care for them. See, Richard, that's all I needed. All right. So this is actually so this is what what Bernsey was talking about, and I'm kind of in a weird position because I have a nine iron with super spin and a G wedge. I don't want to high tee a G wedge because that 13 mile an hour wind is just going to eat it all up. I also don't want to necessarily low tee a nine iron. I don't really have a 
choice, so I'm going to kind of low T this with actually nothing. And uh, let's see what happens. Oh, come on, do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. Somehow, some way, a plan actually worked in my head. Really wish they would turn the YouTube servers on because, damn, that felt good. See, this is why I, ha I hit that shot naked because I was worried that if I hit bite, it would just spin right into the, uh, it would spin right into the water. All right, I feel much better now. That's all I needed. I don't even care if I play terribly the next couple of games. Uh, I got an ace. That's, that's what I needed. It's also Thursday, and I don't know why. I'm kind of feeling some Buffalo Wild Wings. What's up, Kevin? Somebody says, I, I don't know. I think you're probably, whoever just messaged and said, what's up, Kevin? Probably watching on Golden Tea Fan, which I don't have pulled up. For some reason, it only shows up as Facebook users, so definitely shout out and let me know who you are. Uh, this, probably one of the more difficult whole 18s in Golden Tea, especially this look. Um, especially after just nailing such a beautiful hole in one. But we're going to do our best here. We do our best to avoid those trees. Fucking invisible leaf. Ah. All right. Well. Yeah. I know they're they're working on that because that's uh, ouch. That that's tough. That hurts. Personally. Damn it. All right. Let's see. Am I still better than Brian Bernhardt? Ah. Damn it, that cost me. Um, damn it, that was tough. I really needed that. Uh, I needed that eagle there, but. Um, oh yeah, we still got two more courses to go. But damn it, you know uh, that YouTube shot though. I'm gonna have to snip that, or somebody can be very generous and snip that on Twitch for me, just because I, I feel like I had the nice Tiger Woods going there. I look somewhat presentable today. Damn it, that, but that, for those of you that have never actually seen me play Golden Tee in person, that's exactly what I do, is I have a couple good shots here and there, either at the beginning of the game, and then I screwed up embarrassingly through the rest of the game, or, uh, you know, I pull some stuff out on like 17 and then screw up 18. Yeah, Brad Stewart, you're not wrong. Uh, that is hilarious, though. You know, I actually have not seen this look where it's been so close. I don't think you can get there, but that's actually pretty close for a chip. Not that I haven't been, not that I've been chipping good at all, but I also have a super spinny club. Let's see if we can get this. Come on. Ah, damn it. That one's going to be a fun one because there's not too many of those whole ones in 2021 where you're kind of fringe, where you could get it up uh, for chipping like that. So I'm glad to actually see a, uh, a look like that come up. What I'm not looking forward to on this course is the amount of water. Um, that I'm probably going to hit, or the amount of trees. All right, I'm feeling an ace here. This is for Brad Stewart. Ah, oh, just didn't get there. Sorry, my friend. Tell you what, this part four, uh, drivable part four for hole four, so terribly hard to record for real-time rivals. I mean, stock clubs, 
that was a rough one, especially so early on. I was kind of banging my head against the wall going, how in the hell do we do this? All right, now this one, there's a couple of different ways you can go about it. Actually, one of which I have never tried, but we're going to try it right here, right now. I'm sure a lot of you that have already played the beta have done so. Oh, it's beautiful. I would even take the sand here because the sand is a little bit nicer to come out of than the uh, heavy rough. But this is good because I can put backspin and it just kind of trickle up. So if you find yourself in a difficult position there on five, just go to the left. Since we're doing so good with tears today, I figured let's try to do it again. Oh, come on! That would have been so... I didn't need to do that, but I thought it would be fun. So, this hole can be pretty nasty. Um, thankfully, it looks like this setup is going to be pretty realistic. Um, this was another one that was a nightmare at first to record for Real Time Rivals just because there's so many tee boxes and so many different ways you can hit the trees and the bushes before you even got to the green. Um, question I honestly don't have an answer for that I'm not exactly sure uh, we've done tournaments in Ohio before but things are a little bit different with Arizona uh, so I'm not sure you get over that oh look at that uh, I, I don't have a good answer to that one um, but I do know that power events is based out of st. Louis so uh, it's much easier for them like the likelihood of an Arizona tournament goes down just because of uh, the uh, the distance because those guys drive Those machines down from st. Louis. So Arizona is probably farther off the spectrum because of that um, But you never know I think next year will be very telling with you know, hopefully power events being able to kick back up and You know, we'll see what happens uh, This is a new box for me I have not seen this one before. And there's a tree. Uh, the other problem with like this course is depending on what tree you hit or where you get, you know, like that, I'm uh, stuck in the boulder. It's a unique position that I find myself in that I will have to bring up to QA. Uh, there's a lot of rocks you could get stuck uh, behind, or in my case, in, on this course. But the fact that I'm taking a birdie on it is, uh, I'm absolutely okay with that. The other thing um, that's very interesting with this course is there's a handful of non drive par fours. Uh, which we've definitely seen Jim Z go away from a lot over the last couple of years. But I'm pretty sure, just off the top of my noggin, there's like three of them. Uh, which, of course, could change with the dynamic T-zones or new T's. Um, but it's just a uh, just very interesting point that I just kind of came across. Uh, this is also very interesting. Uh gonna just go out on a limb here and say that this was not intentional so I will uh, also bring this up if they haven't already caught it the nice thing that's uh, about this course is there's a couple different seasons where 
you know, you get a nice crystal clear look at this course. You also get that kind of sunset, sunrise uh, look at it. Uh, it's a really beautiful course. The artist did a great job on it. doing so well with trees today we're just gonna go around Ugh. again a lot of the stuff because we are still on the pre-release version here um, just so I'm not playing a version that the public doesn't have access to so uh, a lot of this stuff could be and probably already is fixed you know, for those of our friends that are just joining us now uh, and didn't hear my spiel earlier in the uh, stream. Stop. 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 Gently bounce. Gently bounce. Stop. God damn it. How did that happen? All right. Well, the sand was not my friend there, which is disappointing. I was going to say almost as disappointing as holding out for, uh, for Birdie, but... Oh well. This chorus has not gotten a lot of love for me in terms of playtime, so definitely not surprised by uh, some of the mistakes that I've made. See that one? I, I, I'm not sure how to play that one. I need to. I need to practice this this one a bit more. Oh, come on! That would have been such a nice hole out. Another birdie hole out. I am excited for Monte Zabios though because the last time that I streamed on that course, uh, I almost aced 18 the drivable par 5 off of a rock and what I tried to do with this shot here absolutely positively didn't happen but thankfully thankfully I'm still on the top tier that was the biggest thing I was concerned about alright so this is actually one of those like very thankful to have a nice look here because I'm just going to use that 15 mile hour wind to my advantage, use that tree gap, just throw a 10 and a half out here. A little bit shorter than I probably would have wanted, but still putting in for eagle. Um, but again, there's so many dynamic tees. <clears throat> It'll take some time. I mean, 23, eh, that's okay. It should have been, could have been a lot better. But now we're at Monte Zavios, and I'll definitely explore some of those opportunities to really use the uh, elevation to your advantage. I can't remember which hole it was, but I did hear that somebody drove one of the par fives on uh, on Monte Zabios. So we'll have to uh, see if we can do the same. this one iron out of the rough because I'm still going to get some kickback. It's just not going to be crazy. Damn it. This is another one of those definitely has to be drivable at some point. If not right now. Oh yeah. Easily drivable. Beautiful. Just what I needed. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? I really thought that that was going to say rough and not uh, fringe, which, like, you know, predetermined upset. 
Also, the fact that uh, our first par three on this course and there's already massive elevation changes is, is another one of those things I love about the direction Jim Z took with uh, these courses this year. So Preston Small on Facebook asks, says, newbie here, you're using the same bag and ball for every course. Personally, I am right now, <clears throat> just because uh, uh, I haven't had a lot of time to go through and test out some of the courses. The only potential change I was thinking about is putting a zero hybrid in my bag for Hidden Temple, uh, just because some of those, um, some of the through the temple shot holes or through the temple, you know, yeah. The, the holes that have the temples you shoot through, uh, it's much easier with the zero hybrid because that already comes in so, sh you know, so low. But, uh, you know, over the next couple of weeks, I'll kind of figure out what my plan is for, uh, for the, that club set. But at least for right now, I am using grabbers and my uh, build-a-bag, my one build-a-bag. Not what I ideally wanted there, but selfishly I know this will be a fun hole for uh, rock bounces when it comes to YouTube shots. And also something fun that I was actually just talking to Adam about late last night is um, for the next two weeks we're going to do a $250 gift card to the number one shot of the week. So once these games start going live uh, on Tuesday with the you know worldwide release version of 2021 and you can start sending your shots to YouTube um, we're gonna do the first two weeks where number one shot of the week so if you hit a great shot and you send it to YouTube make sure <clears throat> that you're sending it to Golden T via Facebook uh, lit you know Twitter Instagram whatever the case may be and uh, but you know Whatever platform you need to actually get your shot to us, do it because, you know, yes, we have tools where we can look at the YouTube shots, but we're going to get tens of thousands of YouTube shots next week. So if you have a really crazy, amazing rock wall kind of bounce shot, uh, you know, make sure that we see it in our DMs or on the uh, Gold Tea Fan Facebook group. <coughs> Potentially, Shane, um, with home edition, it's a little bit tougher because, um, you know, we have to track that those actually come from home edition, but we can figure, we'll, we'll do something fun. I'll tell you what, hole nine super brutal this like shot that I'm hitting that I'm gonna put in my, like my top 10 shots I'll ever hit on this hole I mean this is so brutal for a whole nine par four but this setup at least with that six foot very doable especially if you had a wind blowing the opposite direction would not have been as fun uh, let me tell you Come on. Ah, oh, what the hell. Could have been really great. Does put me in first, though, with GSPs. But, man, that ace would have been amazing. So this is another hole where there's so many tee boxes. I mean, I so many, so many tee boxes. I don't even know if this is the right shot for this. But I really just wanted to show off the beauty of the course and just let this ball fly. You know, as sad as it sounds, well, never mind. Now, I definitely... 
I definitely needed that to not land in the rough because now <clears throat> I have no chance of getting in the green I won. So I'm just going to do the un-Kevin Lindsay thing and actually play it safe. This is gonna potentially bump me. Ah, oh, is that Evan? Evan Gosset? No, oh, Jeff Barlow. All right. I don't mind uh, losing a stroke to Jeff Barlow. He's a good guy. This is another par four uh, that I really appreciate because the tee boxes. Oh, Tee box, there's not a lot of room on this hole for the tee box to move, but the artist and Jim Z kind of played with the angles enough uh, that you get a, it really changes up them uh, every time. I am not a thumber, I'm a pusher, whatever that means. Oh, there we go. Damn it, I knew I should have put roll. Well, let's be honest, if I had roll on that and it didn't hit the cup, uh, it would have rolled off. And then I'd be chipping for bogey, so I won't complain. I'm going to try something very weird here. Ah, shit. Well, I was hoping that that would go over. Where in the hell did I end up? Yeah, so that's the problem with being aggressive how I am because <clears throat> then you find yourselves in areas that you can't get out of and then you have no choice but to play it safe. So now, if I want to get eagle, I got to... I mean, this actually isn't terrible, like, but definitely not my first choice on the... Uh, do I actually play for the uh, eagle putt or not? Could have ended up a lot worse. I feel like in one of my previous streams or one of my previous playthroughs, it definitely ended up a lot worse trying to get cute with the shortcuts. This one, <clears throat> another one that's tough, but thankfully the wind's blowing in our direction, so we're just going to high tee it and uh, hope for the best. Ooh! That was a very interesting uh, bounce I was not expecting to get. It makes my, makes my life uh, a lot easier. All right, now this is where things get a little difficult because now you're dealing with a far, like a, a fast wind, a big green slope, and a lot of elevation changes. Which is why I went down to a 170 club for a 230 yard par 3. The rollovers are going to be a plenty here with this course. Again, this is another one of those that plan on hitting your shot without any kind of spin because you're going to most likely need that high tee. Uh, I could have probably hit that a little bit harder, but. I think I may be one for five on putting in for Eagle on that hole. So, hey, but Jeff Harlow lost a stroke there. That's good. I appreciate that. So, 320 yard drivable par five to close out this hole. Um, I don't know if this is going to work as well as it did the first time I played. Maybe? Oh, come on. Please don't hit the rock. Just don't hit the rock. Oh, you bastard. Oh, man. That's how I almost aced this hole, Is except I had, uh, except it hit the fringe and then hit the rock. But, damn it. But that's going to be a lot of fun. I, I'll be interested to see how long it takes for somebody to ace that par five. So there you go. That is your Thursday afternoon cycle of the Golden Tee 2021 courses. Again, as you guys are out there playing on these courses and you find little oddities, make sure to let us know. Um, 
the day one patch coming on Tuesday, most likely of next week, uh, will fix a lot of those issues. So thank you guys for all being patient with us, especially in this very weird year of developing a game during COVID. So that is it for me right now. We will be back tomorrow with some Freaky Friday daily contest. It is the uh, best of 2020 break the scoreboard. So uh, it should be very interesting, a lot of fun. To find a Golden Tee 2021 near you, open up the GT Caddy app, hit that Places button, or go to goldentee.com slash locations, find one near you. If you're on the Caddy, you'll see a white GT logo or icon that indicates 2021. If you are on the Livewire slash Golden Tee website, you'll see the player, uh, those Golden Tee 2020 marquees. So stay tuned, make sure you're following us, and we will see you guys next time. Maybe not. You'll see me next time, but...